how long can they continue this before it hits home? In other words, the bond vigilantes show up just like they did in Europe with Greece. The mathematics on this are pretty sobering. I just take a look at one specific area, health spending, because that's the one that's going to get us first. The federal government went from $53 billion in 1980 to about $800 billion last year. That's a 9% approximately compounded annual growth rate. At that rate, we have about seven years to double, approximately. It's six-ish. If we look at this and say, at what point does the federal government blow up due to this, the answer is about 50% above where it is now, just in medical spending alone, leaving everything else where it is. What that means is that sometime in the next four years, we will hit the wall. Now, my estimate is that we won't get four years. We'll get more like two or three And interestingly enough, there have been some people that claim they've talked to the members of the Simpson-Bowles Deficit Reduction Commission and got their personal estimates on how long they thought we had before it all came apart in the little itty-bitty pieces, and none of them believed we had more than two years left. I think we might get two to three, but there is every possibility that the collapse gets triggered this year if something goes wrong in Europe, because we are assuming at this point, when I run these kinds of numerical analyses, that there's no external shock that forces either grossly increased spending out of the federal government or the more likely situation, if there's a major collapse or calamity in Europe, is that we have a huge problem with tax receipts because there's another big round of layoffs and the tax receipts go through the floor. Remember, the government has two problems. Number one is it spends too much, and the second is it doesn't take in enough. We can fix Social Security without too much trouble. That is actually the smaller of the problems. Medicare and Medicaid cannot be solved no matter what we do. The fundamental problem is the medical system, not Medicare or Medicaid. And unless we change how the medical system works in this country, we get rid of the cost-shifting, we get rid of the antitrust protections that are in there that allow for price discrimination. We basically change everything about the way medicine is billed and priced in the United States. That system is going to collapse. It is inevitable. You cannot possibly sustain a system that has a 9% escalation in costs. You look at what's going on right now. If you are paying $1,000 a month for your medical insurance, in 35 years, you're going to be spending close to a quarter of a million dollars a year. This is not going to happen. You don't have a quarter of a million dollars. And yet, that's the pattern that we have been playing with for the last 30 years, since the 1980s. And it's not just in the government area. It's private insurance as well. Anyone that's paying for their own or anyone that's running a company has seen this. 9, 10, 15, 20% increases every single year. What happens if we don't do this? The first place that will probably fracture is in the entitlements, specifically in the medical industry. And shortly following that, we will end up in a situation where we're seeing 30, 40, maybe 50% unemployment and really the possibility of a government collapse because as the tax revenue goes to zero or close enough to it and the bond market says, okay, it's obvious you're never going to pay. We're not going to loan you any more money. There is a point that you say, well, we can't pay our soldiers you take a look at any of these programs, and you say, well, how do I pay the guy to sweep President Obama's carpet with the money that we have left? And the answer is, you can't, because if you don't pay the interest, you'll never borrow another penny. So, and we have a constitutional problem there, too, in that the, the 14th Amendment says that we can't default on the debt. So, you know, then again, that which can't be paid won't. So I expect very tough times. And there is an old saying, I believe it was Churchill, that said that Americans can be counted on to do the right thing after they've exhausted all other possibilities. Unfortunately, I hope it doesn't have to go that far, but I fear that it will. 